In biology, there is no other relationship that describes the, the relationship between form and function as good as proteins do. So the structure of most proteins is completely predictable, just based on how each amino acid in uh, one of these giant macromolecules is located at some specific site within the structure. This gives the protein the precise shape and the reactivity required for whatever job it has in the cell. So protein structure can be described as, uh, at several levels of organization, and each one of these emphasizes a different aspect, um, uh, emphasizes a different aspect, and then each one of those is dependent on different types of interactions. Um, the four levels are called primary, uh, secondary, and then I haven't drawn yet tertiary or quaternary, which will be for the next two videos after this. And primary is the only one that's just concerned with the uh, sequence of amino acids. So the sequence of amino acids is all that primary is, so this long polypeptide chain and how each amino acid is, is ordered at a specific location within this, this primary structure. The secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures are the, the, the levels that are concerned with the organization of the molecule in space. So I'm going to talk about the secondary structure first. So all matter exists in space as a three-dimensional shape. So proteins are formed by linkages the, among vast numbers of atoms, and their shape becomes very complex. So the conformation that they're in, which just uh, conformation just kind of refers to the three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms of a molecule and their spatial organization. So the secondary structure has two different types of conformation. So the first type here that I'm going to talk about is the alpha helix. So this is the alpha helix. And you can see that it's kind of shaped like a 360 little spiral. Each one of these is called, it's a, a 360 turn. So right here is, let's pretend this is a 360 turn. We'll have three 3.6 residues, just um, 3.6 uh, amino acids. So um, the distance between these, uh, along the axis between the adjacent residues is about 15 angstroms, which is extremely small. So the backbone of the, of the helix, uh, it lies on the inside. So right here, it would be the backbone just in the middle and the side chains project outwards. The helical structure is stabilized by hydrogen bonds between the atoms of one polypeptide. So if we had something like this, it would be a little hydrogen bond right here between, so hydrogen bonds, hydrogen bonds, all in between these situating. So if you have an amino acid here, it would be hydrogen bonded to this one here, same thing here, same thing here. And the surfaces on opposite sides of the alpha helix might have different properties. So on one side you might have, uh, if you had something like a water-soluble protein, on this side you might have uh, polar molecules that love it, or polar amino acids that love interacting with water, and on this side you might have hydrophobic ones that don't want to interact with water. The second type of secondary structure is called um, beta sheets. So this is a beta sheet and at the backbone of each segment uh, or beta strand in a beta sheet assumes a folded or pleated conformation so as you can see here I've kind of drawn this conformation here um, and like the alpha, alpha helix it is characterized by a large number of hydrogen bonds but these are orientated perpendicular to the long axis of the polypeptide chain and they project across from one part of the chain to another um, so an example of this would be silk. So if you had a little strand of silk here, which is about a tenth of the thickness of human hair, you would see that it is 10 times stronger than a sheet or a little strand of steel that is around the same weight and thickness, which is insane. And, and the reason for the extreme strength of this is because the beta strands are highly extended. So the beta sheet resists pulling or tensile forces. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about tertiary structure, and we'll talk about the, the different interactions that go on and how we determine tertiary structure, and then we'll move on from that to quaternary structure.